seems to work. Hooray! Let's see, let's see if this takes up. Hooray! Let's see, let's see if this takes up. Hooray! No, no, I know. I, I <laughs> hooray over and over. That's awesome. Uh, all right, so let's mute that. Okay. All right, Ben, you're going to be my tester if my mic is still working because I want to talk a little bit. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, leave my mic on for the beginning of this because I just was going to see what you guys wanted me to do because I'm doing a lot of different things and there's some stuff that I can touch that I haven't touched yet and that I can get my grubby hands on. Um, today I've been making the neutral variations to kind of a basic grass area. Um, I can show you guys that. I can keep working on that. I have to finish up the Arthurian version and then I have to do the TDD version. Um, this is a lot of just kind of making some assets, plugging some things into the editor. Um, the other thing I could do is I have a whole bunch of place of power assets from John that I haven't um, opened up yet to look at. So those will probably need some editing and some putting together. So that'll be like trying to take Ben's uh, big mock-up of the place of power and try and turn it into some art. Um, so I could do either one of those. Um, and I can show you guys the uh, work in progress on biomes. So this is the grassland. Now I can't see anything. Let's see, let's dock you. I got more votes for place of power. So um, this is the generic. Oh no, this is so. One of the things we need is just a place for everybody to build on a bunch of plots, and that needs to be relatively um, flat, but still interesting. So to that end, I built a, where's my viewer, um, kind of a generic grassland. And this is, um, so if you look real high, you can see it's just one big disc. It's a big octagon. Um, of a bunch of terrain. Nothing, I haven't actually moved any of the terrain myself. It's all done with mods. Um, and what I'm doing is basically creating the Arthurian version of the grassland. Um, so for the Arthurians, actually I'll, jump, I'll change this to the neutral. It'd be a little bit easier to understand what I'm doing. So this was the generic version, and one thing to remember, there's there's two things going on. One is you see um, a lot of stuff popping in and popping out. That's because simply right now the way we're drawing stuff in the world is based on the level of detail in the terrain. So the farther out you go, um, the chunkier the terrain, the number of polys gets. And we basically pick a point on that to say, okay, add in my, my trees, my rocks, whatever, and typically anything tiny comes in close and anything big comes in far. Um, 
so for right now, that's the system we're using. A lot of this will will actually do a fade. Uh, we have to. We have a lot of ideas of just. <laughs> it's kind of funny that we we put a, a lot of time usually put into grass because it takes up a lot of your screen space. And one of the things we want to do is actually have a an engine that we can make things look very dense, whether it be a forest or an open grass field. Um, and still have a lot of people be able to run it at a, at a high frame rate with a lot of people running on screen. So to that end, a lot of thought gets put into things like grass. Um, everything on the screen here is going to have, you're going to see a bunch of little white pops and stuff in there. That's um, just artifacting in the editor. That's not the same in the game. Uh, so right now you'll see like, you can see the grass popping and it's fairly clear when I back in and out. Oop, all gone. All back. Um, that's literally as the terrain uh, changes its level of detail. And it's easier to see when I come up on this mound here. When I come up on this mound, you'll see like more uh, little bits of detail come in as I get closer. There's all the grass and the rocks. And you can see there's a lot more going on in here as I get closer. Um, like I said, all this shiny stuff is artifacting more specific to the editor. Um, I also have, there's a picture I pulled off the web that you can see on the grass here, trying to test out a problem we're having where the, there's four maps that make up every material. The diffuse, which is literally just the color. It's um, more commonly referred to as, as albedo at this point, because all you're trying to do is communicate color and um, color intensity or luminosity. So you don't Put any shadow or lighting information or you really reduce it there's a wide range of how much you want to put in there it's just up to our artistic interpretation then the normal map which is a lot of the surface detail and then the roughness map which is basically um, micro surface detail um, to determine how um, rough or smooth something is how much light gets reflected off of it and then the specularity map, which is the intensity of the light that comes off of it. So one of the problems we were having is that the rough and spec maps weren't showing up. They were just big blobs. So I stuck these pictures on there to try and figure out what was going on. And George figured it out today. And I just have to make some fixes going forward. Um, but in the meantime, that's why there's that picture on the ground on there. So basically, this is just neutral. Um, the mod basically uses uh, different levels of noise to decide where to put things and then you can do things like angle of slope to decide where you put materials and you can uh, spawn things using noise patterns, you can spawn things on specific textures there's all different kinds of ways you can hook things up so this was a little bit of practice because Ben's made the maps so far um, so I'm just trying to go with like a natural gradation from like full grass to not so full grass which is like that and then some dirt areas and if you look closely it actually has little bumps in it um, these bumps uh, we have control all the way down to this level and all the way up to mountain level um, and so for things like this over here um, I've, you can see there's those classic flowers we've had forever um, basically what I did here was say from zero to like, I think it's like 27 degrees, draw the grass. And then when you get a little bit higher, I want you to start drawing um, kind of a gravelly rock dirt texture. And then when you go up to here, I want you to start drawing a rock texture. And then obviously once it gets back up, that goes back down and we get grass on the top. Um, after that, there's a lot of noise in here. Um, so if you look, it gets kind of bumpy and stuff. And I can I can totally mess with that. I can have big spikes going up into the sky. I can have it dipping down. Right now it's fairly subtle just to test things out with the new lighting. Um, if you look closely, you can see like some whiter areas that's um, catching on the spec and roughness maps. So it depends on the angle of the sun and the angle that you're looking at it where those things get pulled out. Um, this is all kind of test case right now for me just to try some things out, figure out what I like. But the nice thing is, is up close you get these little areas where little patches of grass and stuff uh, break up the wall. Um, that's something that's an absolute pain in the ass if you're having a hand create this. Um, the other thing I did in this was we, what I want to do is have grass, any, really anything, um, mainly the grass, whenever you kind of create an area that's just 
think of it as two areas that are black and white. I want it to interpolate the size of the thing on black and white together so they blend and they do a nice little up and down. So to that end, there's actually little areas in here that are higher than others. So there's like this high grass and then there's low grass. Um, but the basic gist of it is, you know, rolling hills with some noise. And when that noise um, gets rocky, you start drawing little rocks and stuff in here. So it kind of looks like rock poking through the grass. Um, we can change this to the Viking version I updated yesterday. So the Viking version, and, and remember this is an influence. This isn't um, specifically the Viking version of things. This is taking that neutral and influencing it with uh, the realm. So in this case I changed out all the flowers to these little blue guys. Um, it's a little bit more um, rough, like there's much more little random pieces coming up. Um, there's kind of a, this browner texture with these little scruffy plants, which I just kind of wanted to see if they would integrate. Um, more rock. Uh, the rock is darker. So I go over here to where the rock is. You can see that it's a totally different rock texture. Um, and right now, all the collision is exactly the same. One of the things we are currently stuck with is um, not refreshing the terrain collision on the server when we do um, realm swaps. However, we will be able to change that. It's just, just something we haven't tackled yet. Um, so right now you're seeing the exact same terrain lumpiness with basically a new coat of paint on top of it. Um, and like I said, all the pop-in stuff, that's all temporary work in progress. I, you know, I'm trying to mitigate some of it. It's going to look different in the editor than it does in the game. Um, I have things I have to go back in and check because I have rocks that might have an LOD on them and they might be set to a certain distance of when they come in that's not the same as what I think it should be. Um, I'm also moving fast, so you'll see things pop in later than they normally would. You know, walking speed is like this. Or actually, this is more of a run speed. So that's about the amount of pop you would get. And right now I'm trying to be careful with how close we draw the grass uh, because I don't want this whole hill out there to be populated with grass cards. I want to wait until we get a little bit closer and you'll see it populates with a bunch and then appear it's denser in front of you. So as I get closer, it will add in the new parts. And like I said, what we'll do is we'll actually use, uh, we'll do this by distance and we'll just fade it in. We won't do the pop, we'll just fade it all in. Uh, that's future engineer's problem. Um, let me actually, I'll save this. And I can jump in here. And the good thing is I'm using XSplit instead of OBS, so I'm not taking up 30% of my CPU tonight. So I should be able to just jump into the game. Come back up. So I just have to put in a couple of extra commands to go to my zone and be flying at the start. You know, I don't have a TDD version, but I will gladly show you guys some other works in progress of, like, the Pine Forest. Um, the TDD, I think, while they give us more freedom to kind of come up with our own look, they're a little bit harder because you kind of have to pull everything together and make it work. Um, Everything's kind of unstable right now, as we've been talking about. We're trying to assess where the state of the game is, so don't be surprised if something really weird happens. Like, I don't think my character's going to show up. Um, yeah, I'm getting all these asserts. Um, some of these asserts are known things that aren't a problem, and some of them we're looking to see what happens. So I think I'm... There we go. So this would be like if you were walking around and you notice it's a little bit cooler, more rocks. Uh, and the idea here is when you came out onto this, you'd be like, well, crap, the uh, Vikings have clearly taken over this area. I want to try and figure out what I need to do to take it back. And I, uh, you guys get kind of a blurry version of things when I move, which is too bad because it looks great. <laughs> Spend all this time on these really dense textures and all you guys see is a blur. Um, so little things like this, like right now, you know, we're going relatively cheap for flowers, but that's mainly, they're, these are just cards. I want to get 500 players fighting on this thing. So the cool thing is, is when you look out in the distance, this feels very different. Um, what I'm going to do is see if I can, let's see if 
I can do this. Get the editor over here. And what I'll do is I'll switch this out to the current Arthurian version, which I haven't looked at yet. I've just been building it. I'll save it. And I will make sure my character's flying, because if he's not, when the terrain rebuilds, he might fall through the terrain. But, you know, a lot rockier, very different uh, kind of feel. Okay, so here's Arthurian. And the goal with the Arthurians is something a little more classic. And right now, I haven't really matched the grass cards to the terrain color. You can see they're a lot more saturated, really dark. Um, and the grass is much more limey colored. Um, I just need to match them up better. But the, the goal I'm looking for here is kind of from this angle that it's much more um, classic English countryside is the kind of thing we've been going for. Um, so if you like look online and literally type up classic English countryside or fields or something like that, you get these much more manicured looks to things. Um, obviously what I have to go through here is do some fixing, like this needs to have more stuff in this area. These are different materials so I can assign different things to sit on them. Um, one of the things that you'll notice is the grass cards at, like if I get down here where I'm straight on, they look... Here's, they have a certain value, and then the minute I tip my camera like this, they get dark. Um, that's the ambient occlusion coming in, and one of the things we have to do is later, you know, right now we're kind of worried about a lot of systems and functionality, is to uh, make it so that the grass um, doesn't use the ambient occlusion to that degree. So that you don't get this, like, lines and stuff, that it blends in better. Um, and we'll develop that over time. So you can see a lot greener. Um, the redraws, sometimes you'll see things disappear and come back. That's something I've got to have Andrew track down. Um, because obviously, once the grass is there, it shouldn't just disappear. Um, so you can see it's a lot fuller than the Viking area. Um, a little bit warmer, a little bit greener. Um, like I said, I'll match the grass and more. A um, lot more kind of pebbles and stuff around the rocks. Smaller pieces. So that's the work in progress Arthurian version. Um, I wanted the Arthurians to have a lot more kind of bigger fields of flowers. It felt kind of more like what you see in Europe. So I rebuilt these guys today to be half as costly as they were before. And one of the things I can see in here is these little specks of white. I don't want all these little specks of white to be drawing on the flowers. That's future Tyler's problem. Um, so like I said, kind of very different look and feel. And um, this is the kind of thing that um, once we have uh, knowledge of a biome in the world, then we can kind of start attenuating color and stuff. So we can actually do like uh, screen overlays and stuff and just shift it a little bit warmer or a little bit cooler. Have a lot of fun with it that way too. Um, what was I going to do? Daytime 6. So the, what this is going to do is it kind of lets me look at um, how rough uh, my materials are. So basically this vibrant shine that goes right down the middle, I'm kind of looking at um, how it's working, really, just how bright it is and everything. Um, that's going to change a little bit when we get the HDR lighting in. So for right now, I'm just kind of going with uh, looks pretty good it's going to change. Um, with this lighting you can see you get a lot of really interesting surface information uh, when you angle the sun. Uh, so you start to see the normals and the rocks and stuff. And it gets a little more interesting. But imagine if like the grass didn't, you know, wasn't so dark at the bottom and the color was a little more matched. The other thing I have to do is take the normals down in the grass so that they are a little bit softer on the eye. They're kind of hard right now. They're like angry grass. But clearly it's really thick. Uh, another thing I always have to look at is what the frame rate's running. So, 40 for this amount of grass is pretty darn good. And um, that's going to keep getting better. Uh, I'm not really worried about that at this point. So, yeah, that's some work in progress. And you guys asked about the TDD. Let me 
jump over to the generic let's see, pine. So this is very much a work in progress. So what you're going to see is not the final version. Oh, interesting. I'll show you what it looks like over here. So I'm clearly missing textures. There we go. So I'll jump back into here. This is, like I said, totally a bunch of mismatched colors and stuff. But it will drastically change in a sec here. So we'll go from grassland to TDD Pine Forest in a moment. Here's nighttime. Where's my update? There it goes. I'll put it back to six where we were at. Okay. So there's going to be some things that don't totally work. Now, you'll notice that it got really dark. It's the exact same time of day. Um, so the sun is trying to peek through. You can see things are, all these little white sparkles and stuff on the ground are all things that I have to update the textures so they don't do that. Um, right now, it's basically thinking that it's super wet. It's super um, uh, smooth surface uh, is basically what it's being told. Let's see if we can see something here. Brighten it up a little bit. So, um, look, this guy's totally broken. That's a bush. And I know exactly what's wrong with him. So, you guys are seeing new things before I've even come back in and touched this since we did read it our lighting. Uh, same thing with these guys. I gotta fix their materials. Um, one of the things we noticed, um, when the trees was that we weren't doing, uh, if, if you guys looked at the update that we did, uh, it's already been a week last week. Um, one of the things that the light, new lighting system did was kind of exposed a lot of things that we were kind of getting away with because light was, you know, one direction and you weren't lighting everything from all angles. So a lot of things were hidden from us. Uh, one of those things being the case of the trees. If you notice, the underside of the trees are fairly bright and the trunk is fairly dark. And what's happening is we weren't we weren't actually um, flipping and drawing the faces. Um, these things are, are, are set as double-sided. And um, so what's in it, what is sort of happening is the underside of the trees are getting way too much light than they should be. It's like they're being lit from above. Um, if I fly, you can see, let's see, can I fly? Some rope fly, I have to move. Okay, so now I'm up above and you can see the color is a little bit more accurate. Um, I still have to update the materials. Anything you see sparkling just needs a material update. Um, the quick version is what I'm working on right now. Um, the longer answer is um, lots of fun stuff to play with. Uh, fly, false, let's see if I can not fall through the world. Okay. So now that I'm down in the canopy, under the canopy, uh, you notice everything got a lot darker. So part of the goal, let's see, daytime 12. So this is new. So you notice the underside of the trees got really bright. Not really what I want. So that's something we'll have to fix. Um, but interestingly, it's drawing the wrong texture in here, which is this green one. But it certainly looks interesting. Um, one of the things I did with the TDD forest from the neutral, so you can see how all the trees got really bright. Watch, I'll jump into the shadows. They'll get dark again. So, on the uh, future graphics improvements to to-do list, um, if I come up here, you'll see it looks a lot more normal on the tops of the trees. Um, I think right now this is... I don't know why it's doing that. It's fair, very interesting. It's like it's intersecting two different things, but I'll go to a better daytime. So, let's see. Daytime 7. So here we get kind of more of an evening look. And like I said, one, or I was about to say, one of the things I wanted to do with the TDD forest was to make it a little bit darker and a little bit denser. 
um, a little more dangerous was kind of has been my own personal goal with the TDD stuff. Um, if you what I did with the trees is I this layout is exactly the same as the Viking or neutral pine layout. The only difference is that um, I took all the branches of the trees and brought them lower and I widened everything out and um, we took the, the texture that's on all the trees is has uh, more leaf, more pine needles in it so it's a lot denser um, and all of that equates to a much denser looking forest. It's really weird how I'm seeing, it's like I'm seeing two mons in here. Don't know what's going on, but I will jump this to the neutral one. Yeah, I think it didn't like totally refresh. Well, like this piece of geometry I'm standing on isn't. It's, it looks like I'm almost in two maps. They're not the same map. I should be seeing this kind of really saturated red stuff on the ground more. That certainly looks cool. And part of the idea with the the rebuild of this was so that you weren't playing... Uh, yeah, see there's a... It's like I'm on two maps or something. So this is the neutral area. And as you can see, it's much more open. Um, and this is only a part, like, part of the idea would be, like, make a rocky area, make a hilly area, make a grassy area, and then you can mix all them together afterwards. So this is literally just pine forest. Um, the previous version, we had, we basically just I stuffed these tall, thin ones everywhere. And um, the current iteration is a little bit more open, so you can run around and then use these little dense pockets more strategically, so that you're not just running around in a camera ping pong area. Um, paid a lot of attention to detail on the ground, different types of textures, a uh, little scruff grass, bits of rocks and weeds, different types of bushes. There's, um, in this mod, there's, um, let's see if I can find some. There's little sticks and things that are lying on the ground, probably not as dense as a real world pine forest, so I put these little sticks on the ground. Um, there's little dense areas with, whoa, whoa, I'm not on the server, so nothing's controlling my physics, so when I tell myself to go fast, I just go flipping fast. Um, yeah, this, this green is not supposed to be there. I don't know what's going on. But there's um, dead branches, um, you'll come across dead logs. Um, dead trees and stuff lying around. Um, and if I, let's see. I'm going to fly really fast now. So, um, one of the things that we noticed was uh, the back face stuff. So you'll see these almost white um, tops of the trees. What those are is the, f the polygon faces are being told to face uh, upwards upwards, and I think they're catching all the um, sky light. So, yeah, a lot goes into this. Let's see if I can jump to the Viking one. I think I almost finished the Viking one. So, the difference with the Viking one is you'll get... Um, we made it a little more spartan, like the trees are, aren't are as uh, dense, uh, it's a little bit more open. It has a more open feel. And everything cools down. But it's interesting, I'm definitely getting the two mods together in the same zone. zone. So the Viking version, um, like you can see the trees are a little bit more um, open, uh, less dense. The bark is uh, a little bit brighter, um, a little more high contrast. Um, instead of just pine needles on the ground, we kind of did like a sticks and twigs kind of ground. Um, different, um, more green, 
little scruffs everywhere. The, the uh, bushes have actually changed. Instead of using uh, kind of a generic green, uh, this is actually holly leaves. Uh, we kind of turn them into a bush. So, all work in progress. Um, and I'm trying to finish them up. And part of what happened was we the, getting the big drop of changing how we do the materials and all the different lighting, like I said, just kind of opened the world up into a whole lot more work that we needed to uh, address and clean up. So just things like this, this little broken branch poking out looks like he's the T-1000 or something, and that just needs a uh, pass on the materials. But the good thing is, is we're not that far off here. I mean, there's not, you know, it's, it's not too much more work for me to do to put all this together. Um, and then what I'm going to do is uh, build out um, an island with all these different things on it. And then um, you'll be able to have variances in it with this texture. I've already fixed him, but for some reason he's really shiny. Um, so... Let's jump to the place of power stuff. So, even even you know the, all that grass. I mean, like each one of these things has to get created, and it's a it's a long multi-step process. If you guys haven't seen any of the stuff, uh, Dion worked on this grass, um, and you know literally it's all hand placed. Every one of those little blades. Um, what I'd like to do in the future, and we're going to be looking at, is actually modeling the grass. Um, and then doing a image of the normals of the grass so that instead of getting kind of a flat look to when it gets shiny You'll actually see like if one blade of grass is doing this and the other blade of grass is doing this You'll see the light shine over this one and not do the exact same thing with this one um, That would be very fun to do um, But all of these different pieces you can see they all have different elements in them like This is the you know, kind of seeds and germinating pieces. So all of these, like, I don't just scatter them all randomly. They're all placed with intent. Um, there's some areas that use the tall ones, some areas that use the one that are seeds, and then some areas that use the short ones. So all of that I'm trying to pay attention to. And I try and not do things I don't like in other games. I was looking at uh, another game, and I noticed that one of the things they had done was they would take, like, the grass like this and they would do this and now it's super tall grass and it just looks like a big stretch card so instead what I went for was actually drawing the grass as tall so you can see there's tall grass and short grass but the main body of the grass is still the same size he's probably stretched out a little bit too much um, but I'm trying to go for a certain level of visual fidelity over everything and then instill that on anybody else who works on things that I want to be able to look up to it and kind of feel like you're not seeing like big blurry things next to really tight things. Um, let me think. All right, let's open up that place of power. Where did Tyler put the place of power? Oh, I think it's in my testing folder. Which, if you've seen any of the like, pre-alpha footage and stuff, that's all the old assets, like the stand-in castles and things we made. Now we're relying on people to actually build the castles. So, come on, open. Um, so, you know, I, I see people talking about, you know, what's pretty and what's not pretty and which game's pretty. Um, you know, right now, we've certainly made a huge leap in fidelity that the engine can do. Um, you know, one of the things we're not trying to do is be the next crisis. Um, you know, those are games that they have... 10 guys on screen. That's something that we just simply won't be able to achieve that level of fidelity because we need to support 500 characters running around on the screen. So, 
what I'm trying to do is be cheap and pretty. Um, the perfect date. Let's see. Did I save it in here? Test objects, grasses, duck holder, clown pillow, building platform. And I've lost the place of power. Objects. Nope. Environments. Did I move it? Objects. Place of power. All right. There's a whole bunch of things in here that John put in. Ben's place of power. All right. So. This right now is a mock-up of the place of power. So as you can see, here's a guy. Uh, that's actually a model from my last project a long time ago. Um, so you can see it's huge. And the idea is this is a representation of the edge of the land. So I could just say, you're the edge of land. Right, so all of this would be land and then uh, we'll do a big pit and a big floaty scary dealy bobby in there and all of that needs to be put together so to do that i need to kind of collect all my resources so let's see i don't need you uh one of the things i did just for fun was i grabbed a let's see Um, I grabbed just some assets that I had lying around, stretched them out, made them bigger, and kind of made this big floaty rock. But I asked uh, John to uh, model the big rock, so let's bring that guy in. Um, these things are all modeled under a certain level of detail, so one of the things I have to do is actually kind of clean up all the textures on them um, and make them work for uh, kind of more noise and more density for when you get up close, you actually see more going on on the rock. Uh, let's see, it's called the lava tooth, apparently. Or you, where did you go? Here it is. So if you can tell, it's very dense and very small. So he's supposed to be like this big, or maybe not that big. He's like the big floating mama jama in the middle of the screen. So move all my guys. Let's get rid of all you. I don't need that. So those are the temporary pieces. Now the cool thing is things like this. I can use these later. Like this guy can be, you know, part of the wall. It's a real quick, easy way to get noise um, in there. You just kind of put a lot of different rocks on the rock wall to get some information. That's probably what I'll end up doing at some point. Um, this whole thing technically needs to be floating on a big, giant rock. Um, so that's going to be a lot of putting pieces together, big pieces, little pieces all over the place. Uh, so this guy... Let's set his materials up. What am I doing? I'm trying to create something. Create materials. A farm. We'll call you Tooth for now. And let's find the map. So you can get an idea where this is going. Um, and we need to put this normal map on. It'll make it look a little better. Oh, man, I'm 
tired. Oh, Tyler made a mistake while he was talking about being tired. So you can, I don't know if you noticed that, there was a little pop there. Um, so this bad boy, oops, this bad, big bad boy is going to kind of sit way up there. And so you can see the scale of this. Here's a guy, right? So one of the things that is always tough to tackle is basically how much texture resolution and, and um, geometry detail is in a guy when he's standing next to something this big. So one of the things I'll be doing is trying to add a lot more noise to this. Um, John kind of put in all the big shapes and some rough texture, but if you stand this guy... Where are you? If you stand this guy next to the rock, you'll notice that like all the pits and highlights in the rock are you know the size of his head. So what I'll probably end up doing is going in and working on the texture and adding a lot more fidelity to it. So right now I'm really just kind of bringing all these things in and setting this scene up. So let's bring the rest of it in. He apparently is called Lava Tooth. Um, the other thing I have to do is reduce him. Uh, ZBrush's reduction tool isn't so great. Let's see what happens if I do it in Photoshop. Let's what am I looking for? Reduce. Let's see what happens when we drop him down. Material hard edges, crease edges, material borders, color borders, that's what happens. That's not so bad. So really all I'm looking at is did I lose any of the silhouette when I dropped it 50%? And it would seem not. The main thing is you want to have all the main shapes represented. And part of the reason why we have normal maps is because of the level of detail you can get in them that you wouldn't know it would be way too expensive with geometry. So, And then we have glow maps, so I can make this guy glow now. Um, so there's the tooth. Let's import all the other pieces. I asked John to basically make me a bunch of toys. Uh, why in the world is this called a quillock? So this I'm going to want to play with some more. I know this has a very rough pass on it. So, like, as you can see so far, it's relatively cartoony looking. Um, really, you know, big shapes and everything. So I'm going to go in and probably tighten up a lot of this. Um, huh? So this is supposed to be the centerpiece. Move. He's supposed to go right here on top of my stand in. So, the way that abilities work. And as you can see, this is huge. It's flat out a little bit. Here we have the thing. So, that is what is taking the center. Successfully penetrate the armor. We do an interrupt and we do a snap on it. Good. But where do we get all the numbers? Have to get them. Get rid of that. And we'll just bring you 
all in and merge you into a happy little family of vertices. Come on, of course. merge. Or don't. Yes. Like, come on. Alright, never mind. You're right. going to be a pain in the ass. Let's keep importing things. Coincidental for my Yes. Huh? Yes. Oh, so how did they connect to so here. Okay. So here we oh, have, I have a statue we could use in here. And, uh, well, an initial tree and a root tree. That's a lot of things. The initial tree is like when you put, first push the left gate. What happens? In this case, they're all just the standard cost, which is if it costs stamina, take away some stamina. If it costs I'm sure all you can hear is Ben right now. He tends to walk talk very loud. I don't have a whole lot of abilities. The right have gate. Crazy, wacky costs and other things. But the root tree is this one, and that's what happens with the ability. Uh, texture, texture, textures, the textures, time, textures, so the textures. Happens. So that's when we start doing whatever this says to do. So, so apparently I imported in two event, gates. Ben, just so you know, everything you're saying is being picked up. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay. So, Alright, so we do our thing, and then... Oh, he put everything in the same file. All of these things. And so, okay, we put a Let's see. In here, we just do different things. So, all right, this really is a bunch of things. As if this was embedded right here. Yeah. Let's see what we got. So, um, left, 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 left. Yeah. All right. So the whole point of these guys is that I wanted them to be modular. Um, so that we can reuse them a lot. Right. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh. Even now. Okay. Uh, so I think I one of the other mics. Here, I can go turn look it look off for a yeah. moment. Uh, so, let's see. So these guys are going to let's just group all this, group all this. So these guys, I might as well just group everything. So these guys, I believe, go down here. They sit across the bridge where Ben's boxes are. I think I'm going to end up putting them over here. You guys get the picture. Uh, there'll be some rejiggering of those things. But you can see how it already starts looking much more gamey. Um, and then all of these things, right? This is its own piece. So if I wanted to, I could make you know one one of these look different than the other. I could connect them because I have uh, four of them to do. So the idea is that I can mix and match all the pieces that are in here. All these little pieces come out. Uh, they're all reusable. Uh, these main masses, I'll probably uh, downres them and use them on the side and stuff like that. Let's see. No, not open. Gates. Spikes. Spikes. I'm not sure what these are. Ah, uh, they are spikes. Alright. So the plan with these guys wish I had the concept art handy. Um, the plan with these guys is one of the things with environment stuff that's kind of different from characters is you want to kind of blend elements into other elements. You don't really want 90 degree turns. Nature doesn't really do 90 degree turns except I guess in crystals. Um, but when you look at the whole thing aesthetically you kind of want to blend together. So one of the goals with these guys, let's see how's he got this. I'll just group them all together show you what the plan is for these guys. 
not only are they lots of little pieces that I can just copy paste everywhere, um, but part of the idea is they can be used here as a way to, this isn't the best example because it's really off the cuff, but you can see that we kind of go from, let's see, right, like you can kind of blend from one element to another so that, um, imagine lots of rocks on one side, the big gate, and then these little pieces, and the idea is to kind of create a nice little turn as it looks more organic, and then this will be something that will be fairly straightforward. It will probably be very boxy. Um, anything that's really game mechanics, uh, typically you'll see uh, big broad shapes kind of covered up with art. Um, so this guy will probably st stay uh, fairly simple. Um, because the minute I, you know, if I do anything to this, it, it's going to have a design impact in how you fight on it, how you move across it, um, how players defend it. Um, so even if I want to make it like half broken or something, suddenly that bridge has a choke point, right? So um, little things like that have to be taken into consideration, which is why we basically do what is a white box like this. Night. Thank you. Um, so. Night, yeah. This is all um, uh, white boxing, basically, all these little boxes. Uh, this has been just thinking of, like, what would be interesting for gameplay, and it's up to the artist's job to fill it all in and make it look interesting while still retaining that same sense of gameplay. Uh, let's see. Import all the things. Twisty spikes. So this was something that I don't think was really part of the concept, but John just took some spins on the spikes and made some interesting pieces. Uh, these would be fun. I mean, the fun thing is with these, like, let's just group these. If you look at them, right, they could be little small pieces that I can stick into the rocks. Or, you know, things like this can be just interesting gameplay objects. You know, that's literally a ramp you could run up, suddenly it's something out of the dark crystal, I don't know. Um, but one of the fun things is just playing with scale. Um, I mean, you can see how cool it would be if this thing was floating up there and, you know, slowly twirling. Things like that would be a lot of fun. So he is just a random piece. One more thing to play with. Oops. So what is just going to set these off somewhere to use later? I still have to set up all these materials. John. So these are from the concept, and they are if you say, place a power concept. find everything else except the one thing I'm looking for. Anyway, um, what these guys are is um, they're basically floaty rocks, uh, but the idea is that we can put um, different runes. You'll notice that Michelle really likes putting runes in a lot of her art. Um, so the idea is that um, we can use these as a generic uh, rock and they can be little floaty pieces that are around the place of power. So what I was thinking of doing with these was using them around the outer edge as little breakups for the organic pieces, like little signposts. You know, we can write whatever we want on them. So we'll set those toys aside. Double-sided. 
front facing. So I'm not, these look the same. I think he saved them out twice. Maybe. Maybe not. So now all these things will come to life when I put all the materials on them. So this, these guys are basically, these guys are actually a good example of kind of what I've been talking about where you use a lot of little pieces to make something bigger. Um, in this case what I wanted John to do was to play around with kind of the shape of the rock here. Um, the main goal is that it, it is basically this. So instead of that, um, we now have this giant cool piece. And the idea here, this is the fun part. So we group all of this together. So let me put him actually in the world and you guys can get an idea of what the point of him is. So Basically, he is, instead of a box, you get this big guy. And this would be hidden. And you, So then what I'll do with these is I need to figure out whether he's just kind of organically coming out of the ground or if he's got a little framing element around him. Um, but then the, the fun part will be taking like all these little pieces, putting a couple of them in the ground, and then making little pebbles all around that. And that's the same idea going from small to large, so you have a nice organic growth from one element to another. Let's see, I've got a lot of textures that need to be assigned. So I'm going to stop importing things for a moment here and grab some textures because we're starting to get a little ahead of ourselves. Um, but you can get the idea that this is going to come together fairly quickly. And part of that is just trying to think smart and build this thing in a smart way. And a good example of that is this piece right here is actually meant to do two things. Where's the bottom? So it's two pieces that what I can do is they can fit together and then he can do other things like let's say you were on the outside of the place of power and you needed a place to hide against uh, people firing from the other side. So this guy can actually fit like this on the other side and can create um, kind of a natural element um, on the opposite side. So you may be down, let's grab a dude. Come. So you may be over here. And one of the things you really have to do to if you really want to pay attention to what you're building, is do a lot of like, what's the player's perspective of things, you know? If I'm running around with my camera here, I might be shooting at guys that are over there, supporting some guys out there, and I might want to hide behind this kind of stuff uh, and jump around, and this kind of thing will really help us create gameplay. And that is what this is about. So, and then, you know, these things can be repurposed. We can retexture them. We can use them for all different kinds of things. Um, if I do this, that's not what I wanted. So we can mirror these pieces, get all different kinds of interesting shapes, all of this stuff. 
can live on the rock wall. All different kinds of interesting options to do with this guy. Um, and one of the things is when he's blown up really big, oops, you won't really be paying attention to all this down here. You're just going to want large, big shapes going on down here. So if we mix and match this with his brethren, you can see how some of this already starts coming together. We'll just assign him this. So I just assigned him uh, the wall texture. And he... You can see how quickly you start getting a lot of information uh, with just one big piece. So let's delete you, delete you. I could put some time into this tomorrow, see if we can get to a screenshot point. Um, interestingly, one of the problems we had several weeks ago is we were trying to figure out why we were all crashing when we ran out across the bridge. And one of the things we actually hadn't tried was making a big pit with the terrain editor and see, seeing what happens. And we started having problems where the... I don't know exactly what happened, but you'd run across the bridge and then your client would crash. And it had something to do with the fact that we'd never built a giant pit in the world yet. Let's see. I'm going to do some materials here. Lots of pieces. Wall one. Wall two. So, same idea again. Uh, what I asked John to do was to make three variations. Uh, so, I'm going to start stepping these guys in. And the fun part about this is literally like these little lips on the side, the width of this thing, all of that is going to have a direct impact on gameplay. Whether or not people can get up on this thing, you know, I'm sure people will figure out, Donnie in particular, Donnie in particular will figure out a way to do, um, to pop himself up on top of this thing. Let's see, let's hide you. the last one and yet if you'll notice there's four of these um, I really didn't want to spend an artist's time on four very distinct ones when obviously we could get a lot out of just um, rejiggering the whole thing let's see wall three so we have the third one One sec here. Let's see. How did it get to be nine? Let's see. I'll tell you one thing. The the weeks. Uh, Mark was actually just saying to me earlier. How did it? How did the week go by so fast? It's one of the things when you're actually having fun at your job and working some extra hours. The week goes by really fast. Let's see. Delete you. You. Um, so one of the things we've talked about in the past is it's really easy for us to audit the game. Um, you guys saw I had the client window open there, and I changed the entire um, terrain. Right. Uh, one of the cool things with our engine is that we can re we can iterate very quickly on the game. So if we put this thing together and we find out, oh, um, you know, I need to move this guy 
two meters forward because after a little bit of play testing we figured out that there's a problem and two meters is going to make all the difference. I can actually go into the asset, move that thing forward, hit save, and wait for it to pop in on the server. Like you guys could be playing live and it will just pop forward. Uh, it's one of the great things about this engine. I've worked on projects where not only did the artist have to sit and wait like 10 minutes for anything to actually show up on the game, but then you would actually have to re reload the level, fly your guy on over there, go find the thing you changed, go, huh, that looks better, and then, you know, make iterations after that and repeat ad infinitum. And then on a lot of projects you have the whole idea of, um, well, we're going to make a change, we're going to have a bunch of meetings, we're going to figure this all out, and then we're going to, you know, put it into an update, we're going to test that update, and it could be a three-week process, and that little two-meter change is sitting in that waiting uh, the entire time. So one of the cool things is we can actually do this fairly quickly. So what I'll probably do, let me think, I could probably get through a good portion of this between a little bit of time tonight and tomorrow. And I saw someone in there had said, you know, hopefully we get a screenshot of the work in progress tomorrow. Um, what I wanted to do was to uh, take one of the uh, areas that, like this, right? So take one of these areas. This is the pine forest. And... Um, This is the pine forest area. So what I wanted to do was to put a big hole in there. All right, so what I'm going to do, I showed you guys the neutral grass, the earth grass, and remember influences. Um, so neutral grass plane with Arthurian influence, with Viking influence. I've uh, started on some of the assets for the TDD influence. And then we did a little flyover of the neutral pine, the TDD pine, the Arthurian. Oh, we didn't do the Arthurian pine. I skipped that. And the uh, Viking pine. So what I'm going to do is take a little break here. I'm going to uh, do a little bit of writing, and then I'm going to come back on and just put some music on and sit and do a little bit more work on the place of power. Um, so I will come back to you guys in 20, 30 minutes. Um, if you guys want to hang out and see anything else that I'm doing, but it'll, it won't be talking and explaining things. It's just going to be me quietly working on uh, putting all the materials together on that. Um, so I will catch you guys in 30. Where'd my window go? I haven't used this program in a while. Stop just